On this edition of Our World with Channel 6 News, we go one-on-one -on -one with Mrs. Garbo Hearn. She tells us about the positive influence she's bringing with her bookstore and art gallery. She's our headliner. And next, we speak with Celia Anderson, a former Lady Razorback and newfound author. All this and more, up next. Tell us a little bit about Mrs. Hearn. I'm the director of okay. Pyramid Art Books and Custom Framing in Hearn Fine Art. I'm not an artist, I'm not an author. Okay. Although we do have a coffee table art book that we edited and put together, but you know, I just make everything happen and put all the things together. How did you come up with the title, Pyramid? You know, dealing with the books, arts, and framing. Pyramid, how did you come uh, up with it? Well, we opened actually in 1988 mm -hmm. as Pyramid Gallery. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we changed our focus. Our focus has always been African American literature, and or art, and we've increased our offerings over the last 22 years. Yeah. Uh, the initial name of Pyramid came from my uh, study of Egyptian culture, and the pyramids are one, are the one thing that is you know, long-lasting and will be around, have been around forever, yeah. and they're structurally sound, and you know, they're, mis they're mystery, but they're something that you know, people think about as long-lasting, so that's, how I came up with the title of Pyramid initially. Uh, Hearn Fine Art um, developed this title in 1987 when we moved to the River Market District and we changed our focus from decorative art to museum quality fine art. And um, you know, I read somewhere if you really want to make a difference or make people know you put your name on it. So yeah. that's how Hearn Fine Art. All right. So name some of the artists that you have in your gallery today. Um, I represent probably over 55 artists. Uh, some that you may know uh, from Arkansas are Kevin Cole. Uh, he's from Pine Bluff and he lives in Atlanta now. He's, he's teaching, he's the chairman of a wow. high school art department, but he also has a, a very good professional career. Uh, A.J. and Marjorie Smith, they're both professors at UALR. One pre uh, teaches printmaking, one teaches drawing. And let's see, Dean Mitchell, he's a watercolorist from Tampa, Florida. Yeah. Uh, Susan Williams is a sculptor from Little Rock, Arkansas. So it's a wide variety of local, regional, and national artists. Tell me about the open book discussions. What are they like? Are they heated? Are they mellow? What's going on with them? Well, you know, we haven't um, actually done that many. We, we, this weekend we had our grand reopening yeah. and we had a young lady from Jacksonville who read her book for ages three to five, which was Kendall's Plans. And we probably, she did it about four or five times for groups of five to 10 mothers with babies, you know, toddlers, you know, so that was interesting because you know, she read the book, took it probably less than five minutes, but you know, they got engaged in it and then right. she signed it, we took pictures and that kind of thing. So it's getting them used to and understand that books are exciting. Then we moved up again with Celia, did her game time presentation and then released her second book, Daddy's Home. And then we did a, uh, uh, a seminar where a gentleman came in named Sylvester Smith who, look, who took two books, Advance Your Swagger and How to Tie a Tie, and gave a seminar on how to be a gentleman in this day and time. Right. And that he didn't write either of those books, but he used them as a background to get the subject going, which is gonna be a continual thing that we're gonna invite um, successful males to come in and share their success and you know just di different things that they know are keys to success in terms of handling themselves. Right. And then um, Sunday afternoon we did uh, Dr. Michelle Wright, who is also a local author, uh, who was published by Simon & Schuster. She did a review of her book, Dear Success Seeker, where she had uh, written over 100 women to share the secrets of their success and that wow. she compiled their letters in her book. And actually one of them was from Little Rock, I mean, Dr. McGraw. Yeah. And she came by, and so we had about 50 women and you know there were some men sprinkled in, but it was really um, an inspiring afternoon. It was a, we called it a spirituality. So we had tea, and you know we talked about success, connecting that with spirituality. So those are the kind of things that are uplifting. And then okay, Saturday night we did books after dark, yeah. where we explored urban fiction. You know, so that's one one of those things. That was a fun event. Women came, they laughed, they joked. <laughs> 
But you yeah. know, they got in touch with their sexuality through reading, and you right. know, that's a, you know. So what we want to do is touch all people as we can. We want to do something on uh, uh, eating correctly, fitness, yeah. hair. You know, that's a big thing in our community. What do we do with our hair? Natural hair, perm. So we're gonna, and we have some people who are uh, master gardeners, and they hooked up with a young lady who takes raw food and really makes it taste exciting. Right. And so what we're trying to do is get people to understand that you have to take control of your own destiny, and you can do so starting with the book. I pose the same question to you that I asked the author earlier. Is it fair to say African American children don't read, or that they do read, they just don't read enough? I don't know. I, I can't really speak to that. I don't think any child, black or white, is reading as much as they should be, based on the computers and the phone and electronics. Yeah. I don't think that books are taking the forefront as they should. I think that um, children are given television, access to television way too soon, yeah. and they're giving someone else's dream to consider rather than the critical thinking that a book allows you to. You know, when you take a book, that's someone else's opinion, and you get to go back and forth with that. You know, you can put it, pick it up, put it down, yeah. and you know, go find another book, and you know, that kind of thing. When you see it on TV, yeah. that's become almost the gospel to say that this person is an expert because they were on TV. And so, you know, not to put TV yeah. down, but I'm yeah, just saying, saying yeah. that it's, um, I think you can have, you should have both. Right. And I think that the computer is taking over where books used to, you know, you'd have television, you have a book, go read a book. Right. Now it's going to get on your computer, yeah. you know, instead of go pick up a book. I mean, I think every child should have a library card. Libraries are way, way uh, underused. I don't think they're utilized as much as they should be by parents. Um, I think then comes the bookstore because once you see, you know, what you like to read, you know, having libraries in your home is, I think, is very important. And I, I'd love to see it just like you got a TV room, you got a library. Yeah. You know? And so that's what we're trying to focus on is building good libraries for people. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Thank you.